welcome to this uh, little session about uh, how to do Perl meetups. Um, I made some promises in the schedule, which I'm kind of going to touch on and break a little bit. But this is a session where we get to discuss a little bit. And I've set aside some time at the end where we can actually do Q&A, share some experiences, uh, throw out some ideas, um, depending on what you guys need. And who uh, the, those of you who have experiences, I see there's quite a few very experienced uh, organizers in this room. Uh, we can share some of what we've done over the years. Um, yes, so we have some tribal knowledge. Stuff that you kind of only have to uh, learn by doing. Uh, we can share some of those. Um, we, I'm, I'm trying here to also help you guys as somebody who may want to organize something to help other, uh, others e get an easier time to get into the Perl community. That's a major goal here. And uh, uh, maybe give you a few ideas on how and what to organize and make it not as hard for you as it might be, or as you might imagine it to be. Uh, and at the end, we'll have a plenary discussion, as I said. So basic motivation for this talk. I'll throw some ideas at you. Uh, if you don't agree with them, uh, I'll ignore you. <laughs> don't worry. We have to, I'm here a little bit also to provoke you guys. So I'm saying I'll claim first that the Perl community is a place for awesome developers and awesome companies. I'm imagining that uh, we're not only developers. We, the companies, for good and for bad, are part of our community. It, Either directly or indirectly. Um, and if your company depends on the Perl community in some way, which I assume it's the truth for everybody in this room and maybe even uh, uh, on the video here, um, the question to them I would li I'd like you to ask to them is what does uh, your company want you to look for, to find? Would they like you to find um, an awesome colleague or an awesome employer? Because as a community, we get to offer both options to people who are part of the community. Um, I would guess most uh, companies out there, out there, they would say, please don't make a decision, please... Uh, I, I, I will fix the colleague thing, or, or, or I don't want to talk about this. Uh, the community isn't a source of colleagues. And most people, uh, most co uh, companies, I would claim, think in that way. And they certainly don't want you to quit and find another employer. But uh, still, there are these three options for each and one of us. Uh, I certainly hope you are more interested in finding awesome colleagues. And uh, if you, you kind of are unsure of what's going on, then you have an, uh, uh, something you can do in the meanwhile while we're figuring out what to do. And that is to uh, create arenas where awesome developers and companies can meet. Uh, so to organize uh, stuff where you can also show off yourself and decide on stuff like... Um, where and when to meet. So if, if you need, like for example, uh, uh, at a certain point in my career, I didn't have any work where I could travel to conferences. So I decided to make the conferences come to me. Which is, it actually works. <laughs> uh, but you can also shape and influence your local community in the facts, uh, in the ways you choose to organize, what you choose to organize, what you choose to do, how you choose to be visible, and you can even influence what's cool and what's not cool <coughs> by the fact that you are inviting certain people and by extension uh, forgetting to invite other people. Uh, uh, this is like the hard point here, but we can make it nicer. Uh, as an organist, you, this is what you could do or can do, this is what you might want to do. Uh, you might want to have a good relationship with developers and companies. 
That means that since you have um, uh, involved in your local Perl group, uh, Perl developers in your area may want to uh, go to your events and get a relationship with you and that you can use in turn to learn what that company does, what they, it needs, etc., etc. You get to get a, an idea of what's uh, uh, needed and you can even listen to people to hear what they think is cool or not and let that influence your choices. Um, so, would you like uh, an awesome colleague or an awesome employer? Don't choose. Uh, instead, prepare. Uh, and to do this, uh, we organize meetups. That's why we're here now. So let's take a short overview of a couple ideas for meetings you might want to do. Uh, um, I'm I'll just list through them quickly. You can do some kind of a tech demo, uh, look at the cool things that we're working on. This is especially useful uh, for companies to show off cool stuff they're doing. A tech introduction might be more of a, a, a library or a something that's published on CPAN uh, that you, you, you want people to learn about. Uh, just hacking on stuff. Uh, uh, that gives you the benefit of working with cool uh, people. Uh, organizing a hackathon is something I, we've done quite a lot in Oslo, and it's, it's been almost always a positive experience. There have been like a few where I, I wish we had done, done things differently, but we can talk about that later. Uh, you can always have the social events. You meet the people and drink the beer or whatever you like to drink and eat. It's quite important. Uh, uh, if you're ambitious, you can do the conferences. Uh, that's more, uh, that's more like the social thing with the extra stuff and an overload. So don't do that unless you're people like him. <laughs> Crazy people organize conferences. Uh, but you can also organize classes. Uh, we have done that in Oslo quite a few times with great success. Um, and... Uh, this is not done much in the per community. We've done it once in Oslo where an excursion is basically, we tell everybody, we're going somewhere. And then anybody who wants to come with us and pack for stuff, uh, they, they signed up. And we went to Preikestolen, which is, uh, uh, yes, we have, this is the t-shirt from that event. Uh, it was awesome. We uh, uh, went to the western coast of Norway to a fjord. We had five days of hacking on moose, plus a trip to one of the most iconic nat natural uh, uh, tourist uh, visit points uh, in Norway. It's one of the most recognized places in the world, in fact. It's uh, like a square block that goes 600 meters right down, and you get to sit on the edge and look at the, the, the fjord down below. And then, no, but we did try out to bring some remote controlled helicopters to uh, film ourselves, but that didn't work. Sorry. So, so it was just before the quadcopter revolution, uh, 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 but okay, it was fun. Uh, and, and others could do the same. Um, oops. So uh, just, uh, I'm making some uh, keywords for you guys here. Uh, demonstration for businesses, demonstration of tech, hacking, meeting, meeting many people, learning stuff, and traveling. That's the type of activity you can do. Then we look at the audiences you might want to address and, and attract with your meetings. Uh, old friends like ourselves. Uh, you can look at the grave uh, here in the room here, and we're over half. <laughs> which is uh, okay, but we like advanced topics usually. We're, we're into the, the culture and the language and the tech and the and libraries and everything. Then there's uh, new employees in any company that needs to get up to speed in that company's uh, stack. Maybe companies want somebody to tell about, say for example, how DBI works or DBX class works or how Moose works workshops or, or seminars or presentations around those uh, relevant topics uh, for a, a 
maybe that's part of the onboarding uh, uh, system at a company. That is highly useful, a highly useful uh, audience to try to address to if you know a little bit about the companies uh, in your area. In general, uh, lear learners, students, people who want to just get into a specific tech, they uh, would uh, not just have want relevant to topics, but they may also want something that motivates them. So if you can show something which is impressive or cool or uh, uh, something that makes them say, oh, I want to learn more about that, uh, then that's also uh, uh, worth doing. And in general, the rest of the people are the ones who are in general curious. And uh, I think, uh, giving them comparisons between similar technologies, showing like these are the differences between Python 3 and Perl 6. This is how much code you write when you use C-sharp. This is how much code you write when you use uh, Perl and, uh, and stuff like that. You figure it out, this can be made useful uh, uh, at least for those people who are open-minded and want to learn about some basics. Uh, and, and uh, are curious. Let's call those types of audiences advanced. Uh, all this is advanced stuff, REM stuff, be impressed or compare stuff. And let's make a chart. Uh, this is an ASCII chart. It looks horrible. Um, but I, I think you can get the point here. Um, this is stuff that Oslo Perlmongers has done. Uh, it says, yes, a bunch of places. Uh, we've uh, given demonstrations uh, uh, of businesses. We've been to Telenor, which is one of the biggest uh, uh, telecom. It's probably, uh, it is the biggest telecom in Norway. Uh, and had a, one department there show off some of the interesting stuff they've been doing. Um, we've uh, had uh, hacked on uh, both advanced and relevant stuff, meaning like advanced stuff is like Moose stuff or Perl 6 hackathon of some sort. Uh, but also uh, 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 on um, things, say we, we organized a few Modulicious events and companies in Norway that used Modulicious came to hack on Modulicious stuff because there was a core group was uh, available there. So that's, that's like, you can do stuff like that if you have companies within your network that uh, are interested in specific technologies, the more the merrier. Um, if you can see here, uh, when it comes to meeting many people, that's conferences. Uh, uh, we have, I think we've been pretty good at that in Oslo. We've managed to uh, try to make our conferences as attractive to all the possible uh, 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 audiences um, made an effort there, not always at the same time, but over the, over time. Um, uh, what we haven't been doing much is traveling. That was one time. Um, when we do meetups, regular go out and, and social stuff, we usually talk about like whatever is. Uh, the people are doing currently, and it's very seldomly introductory stuff. And it's, we, I might put a Y next to uh, the impress uh, column there on the, on the meet uh, roll, but it's, uh, we, uh, we haven't been very good at uh, reaching out to students, so no Y there. Uh, if we, we turn this around, this looks like it, uh, this is our failure chart. We suck at this, um, uh, or, or we haven't bothered to do anything about that. But a couple of those are worth uh, um, uh, uh, looking closer at. Uh, the learn learners we're trying to address, we haven't been good at uh, um, trying to attract them with advanced stuff. It's kind of obvious in some way, but showing people who are learning something interesting that there is some really cool stuff that they can aim for is, I think, a positive thing. Uh, we haven't been doing that. Um, same when it comes to comparing stuff. We haven't made uh, super simple comparisons uh, for uh, beginners. Uh, 
Uh, one event uh, some years ago, we got uh, Karl Masak to come and uh, uh, hack on, uh, do some 15-minute public writing. He was supposed to do um, uh, write a, a, a uh, Minesweeper in Perl 6 in 15 minutes uh, in public with this, what he did on screen. Uh, and there were also three other people there, one implementing it in JavaScript, one in, I think it was Ruby, and one in Java. And we got to compare four people do implement Minesweeper in four languages just after each other. Uh, uh, of course, JavaScript won hands down because they have a built-in user interface. Uh, but I would, I personally think Masak's uh, um, presentation about Perl 6 was the most fun one because when he was finished, well, he didn't finish. But uh, when there was a few minutes left, basically he said, "Okay, let's we can't make a new feature, so let's just clean up." And he started showing off. Like, okay, this, we have two uh, um, loops inside of each other now. Okay, let's just turn this, one of those into a, 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 use a hyper operator, a meta operator, and then, and then suddenly the code becomes, uh, and people said, what the fuck would just happen? And that was awesome. I really like that. And the column there, uh, the impress column, that was to be make show of impressing technologies for beginners to motivate them. We have not been good at that in Oslo. So that means uh, my point here is to show you that uh, while Oslo is probably the best picture of uh, how uh, of the ideal prolongers that everybody in the world should look at as an example how fantastic you can be, that is not true. <laughs> that is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> And then also PM, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Are there other groups? I don't know. Uh, in any case, uh, it, 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 you can make one of these for yourself to figure out uh, uh, what you can do, what kind of options, what kind of companies you have around, what do they need, uh, and try and get some, uh, use that for, as an inspiration for figuring out if you want to do something fun. Uh, but, Let's see. I've, I've called this capacity building two, which is kind of wrong, but okay. Um, if you're, I think this, these slides here are in the wrong place. All right, okay. Happens to the best of us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I, this is something I've changed like t 10 minutes ago. Okay, examples, uh, topical seminars for audiences, uh, one thing you can do, uh, let companies recruit through your events. That's actually not a bad idea. Uh, you, you can do that like uh, the, the crazy people in the Perl community, which is organize huge conferences or medium conferences like this. Um, uh, or if you want to just go out and, and, and uh, uh, smooch or whatever, What's the word for it? Uh, leech on some other community, just be there and show that Perl uh, exists. You can do like we did yesterday and went to the CCC uh, uh, chapter here in, in town to show people that, hey, there are Perl people in town. And of course, they were scared and uh, everybody <laughs> went into a corner and tried to ignore us. But uh, uh, we had some nice discussions and we got to see the place. And uh, uh, well, now they know Perl exists, at least some of them, and I hope that they did get a horrible impression from us, so you can do that also. We can talk more about that later. But in any case, useful things you should ask, questions you should ask yourself when you're trying to figure out what to do. Check out what people want or need, but, um, what you would you like to show, um, what resources do you have available, do you have access to certain venues? Uh, and what's interesting, fun, and useful, or cool? Uh, and what's the opinion about those things in the community? Um, we can talk more about stuff like this later. Um, that's like the first bit. So 
I want to introduce you now to a couple terms. Uh, the first one is a Norwegian term called dugnad. It basically means uh, the act of volunteering your time and effort to improve something in your community. Uh, I love that word, and uh, this is like a part of Norwegian culture. Uh, uh, and when uh, the local housing society says, ah, we want to clean up after winter, we have a dugnad, we go out in the garden, we get all the leaves off the ground, uh, uh, and then we have maybe some food and drink afterwards together to do with our neighbors. Uh, or, or we have dugnad at the local sports club when they have a sports event of some sort. I don't know, sports ball, that's a sport. Uh, this is a part of the thing that uh, we do find everywhere, and I think it matches very much with open source ideals about volunteerism and stuff. Then we have another word called titsklemme. That is the phenomenon of constantly not having enough time. I don't know, I, I, the, a good translation in German? Zeitmangel. But the klem is more like a vice, something that crushes you. Yeah, okay, that's all right. So it's Clement. Yeah. yeah, okay. So, so this is a recurring thing in any kind of volunteer uh, organization. Uh, and the last term I want to uh, talk to you about is uh, capacity building. And that's basically. Uh, you ask yourself what you need in order to be able to organize something and then get that, to make that happen. That's capacity building. Uh, I have no idea. Uh, good question, actually, but I shouldn't know that because I have another talk which I have to talk about that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, a little bit more about capacity building then. Uh, I would call it uh, uh, calorie hours of attention that you can, uh, that's, so, that's something you might want to get a capacity, increase your capacity in the form of calorie hours. Um, you, can, you might want to uh, increase uh, your con amount of contacts or colleagues and friends that can help you. Uh, you might want to find money. I'm not kidding. Uh, in fact, uh, I would say uh, calorie hours of attention. I would say just forget about that. Everybody is busy. Everybody has family. Everybody has work. If you can, if you can make your children help you organize a conference, that's awesome. But uh, uh, some people might uh, come and protest and uh, talk about labor law. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> Scary, but okay. Uh, you might get in trouble. The children, okay. Uh, but I put, I put a green mark next to the money here, and that's me, uh, I'm here to, I want to provoke you a little bit and say, uh, that isn't as bad as it might be. Uh, and the reason for this has to do with the regular volunteer's dilemma. Uh, if you want to do, do not, and you have a disclaimer, you are basically fucked, then nothing will happen. Like you are volunteering and you don't have time to volunteer, does not work. Uh, but if you want to volunteer and uh, you can get kind of a little bit paid for it, it's kind of weird. It's a little bit bad in some way because uh, what's the point of volunteering if you pay for it? That's not volunteering. But it's, it, it's actually better, it's less bad than the first option. Because you actually get shit done that way and we need that. So that's why I'm here now. I want to say to you, if you have to juggle the balls between volunteer work and business work and life, and you don't want a second job, then, well, how to get anything done? Uh, yeah. So we have a volunteer solution, which I want you guys to thoroughly think about today. That's a hybrid approach. Uh, I don't want you guys to just work for free, 
uh, with the whatever stuff that you've imagined. Uh, I want you guys not to, uh, I don't either want you guys to start treating your local Pernmongers uh, group as a business, because it's kind of not, and it goes against uh, much of what's good with volunteering and open sourcing, at least in my opinion. Um, what you could do is instead try to find some resources so you can, so you can buy a few hours every month, say two days a month. Say, go to somebody who knows you can trust, you, who you know you can trust. Say, would you be interested in helping the community organize something uh, by focusing for 16 hours every month and you get paid for that? Uh, yes. So that's kind of an interesting, weird hybrid community thing we are talking about here. You still got to get to organize something interesting, cool, and useful. But you might focus on offering commercials for profit classes, for example, uh, that give you a cut of the uh, profits from it so that it can pay for those extra, those few hours every month you do uh, spend on organizing stuff. And then you buy someone's time with that, and you repeat. On top of that, that means you have one activity which is about the community health, one activity which is about the community health and um, getting money, one activity which is about spending that mother and that money in order to start again and continue. This is a positive feedback loop. And we did that, and not completely like this, uh, but we have had classes with Damien. Uh, Damien uh, Conway, uh, where we charge, five, charge 550 euro per seat ish. That's Norway, so I don't expect this to be true everywhere. Maybe 400 uh, euro per seat is uh, more realistic. Uh, in Eastern Europe, Europe, probably less than that. Um, a quarter of the profits went to Oslo Perlmungers. That's not enough to buy anybody free, because Damien only came once a year. Um, uh, but it was quite enough money for us to organize more ambitious events, buy some beer and, uh, at, uh, at the pub uh, with regular, uh, on a regular basis, and get shit done. Uh, so, the, uh, and I guess... If we play our cards correctly together, we might make this a uh, viable solution for everybody involved. We also tried this with uh, Tempire and Matt Trout and Gavoy uh, uh, over the years. Uh, different, we tried different stuff, uh, different ways of doing things. With Tempire, that deal was 50% the cut to Oslo PM. But that 50% was spent on organizing ModulConf number one uh, some years ago. So that conference went widely, widely profitable, and we could send money to the next organizers. And, uh, well, it was, it was, that didn't work, but we managed it, uh, managing to get the funds, and while at the same time making sure that uh, Tempire actually has <laughs> money's worth was well paid, as time was well paid, uh, it, it worked out. This is repeatable, even uh, f for different communities and more specific topics. Um, so, you can ask uh, your local uh, companies. Uh, the, maybe those are people who are members Developers who are members of sysadmins who are members of your meetup group or mailing list, ask them to talk with their uh, boss. Ask them if you can have a meeting with their boss. Figure out what they need, do something, and then you have a profit. Okay, uh, kidding a bit, because there's something interesting going on here. Uh, with Damien, it was super convenient because he has a lot of classes and we just picked among those and that it worked. That, does, well, that only works for Damien. Uh, if we're going to make step two work here, we kind of have to cooperate a little bit. Um, we have to help each other find the teachers to give those classes. Um, 
uh, to use the network we have when we go on RC and talk in the YAPSI channel, for example, uh, or when we meet each other at conferences, that if somebody hears about uh, or, or has tried uh, a really good teacher at home and it worked well, then you tell the others, hey, uh, this, I have this guy here, which is pretty good at introduction to DBI's class. That's actually valuable. That's useful. And this business at the end of that discussion. So is Oslo PM's approach repeatable? I think so. Uh, it has to be experimented with a little bit. Let's talk about that afterwards. Uh, in the meantime, uh, let's, there's some useful resources you could uh, look at. Uh, so, so as, has everybody here seen this particular website? Perl.meetup.com. That's meetups uh, uh, in, uh, index of every meetup group that has uh, tagged it with, it with the word Perl as, uh, in, a, in a tag. In the description. Um, the biggest ones are, of course, in Silicon Valley, and they have like two and a half thousand people. Uh, but uh, here in Europe, there are quite a few. Not everybody is as big. Like Oslo has 300 sums, so or we are ranked like 10 or 15 or something in the world. But it's pretty good. Uh, uh, of course. Awesome. <laughs> and if you, but, but uh, um, uh, uh, getting visibility on meetup.com uh, by organizing stuff, uh, that's awesome because it's a larger community where people who are interested in certain techs, technologies, uh, or keywords, or uh, uh, doodads, they can get a warning that something relevant and interesting is about to be, uh, come up, and you can exploit that. Uh, everybody knows the PMORG system, so if you are, if you're, per, if you are considering, well, I should have done this earlier. Uh, hands up uh, to those of you who are not part of a Perlmonger group or would like to do something community related in us uh, anywhere where you are. Everybody does stuff. Okay, let's make a sanity check. Everybody who does things with and for their Perl community in their area, raise your hand. Okay, one is sleeping. <laughs> You're not doing <laughs> Okay, so, so so you guys are already. I'm preaching uh, preaching to the choir. Okay, I should have checked perhaps. So you all know the Apsi channel. Okay, everybody who cares about doing stuff uh, that requires coordination between people, including figuring out if there are interesting speakers, uh, if for any practical purpose. This is a, a, a channel where lots of uh, uh, involved people are hanging out and can help. This is not dedicated to Perl mongers. There's a separate channel called Mongers, which is more about uh, infrastructure help. Uh, if you have problems logging into the PM or website or something, they can help. This is uh, as a way of coordinating, asking questions, getting help, etc. Another source, a research worth uh, looking at is looking at interesting uh, projects on CPAN, figuring out who are the core members of that project, and then talking with those. They, they, they hang out in usually their own, uh, some IRC channel. Uh, you can meet them at the conferences. Uh, quite a few of you guys uh, and those in the other room are core members of such projects. Uh, you can go, go to them, figure out who they are, ask, hey, I'm trying to organize something back home. Would you be interested in coming and visit it? That, that's a way of solving a bunch of, uh, of finding interesting topics to do. Uh, you guys in this room uh, are also a network. Um, who is sitting next to somebody they don't know? Raise your hand. Okay. 
Have you met him? Do you know that person's name? Can you tell anything about that person which is uh, interesting and true? <laughs> okay. So I would say um, uh, those of you who raised their hands, talk with, uh, for a moment with the person next to you. Uh, yeah, we can do it now. Say hello. Turn next to each other. Greet. Reach out your hand. What's your name? Get to know each other's name. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay, enough socializing. Stop, 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 stop. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we are computer geeks. We're not supposed to do this. Yeah. Yeah, yes. We have also the YAPSI channel. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's a GPW IFC channel also. Yeah. Okay, so so uh, that was my main idea. Um, there's a lot of practice and uh, 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 well, tribal knowledge still in this room here. Uh, I think, how many minutes do we have left of the uh, talk? I'm already past the time. All right. So, but we, yeah. So, so we, can, yeah, we can, we can talk and ask questions and throw out ideas right now if you want to. And, uh, uh, yeah, let's talk. Who is considering uh, organizing something in the next few months? Two, three, four, five, six, six. The, those of you who aren't raising your hand, uh, would you like some help in trying to make that happen? No, no, no. Those of you who didn't raise your hand, like for example, you. Uh, what, in your mind, you say you want to do stuff with your local uh, meetup group or Perlmungerish group. Because you raised your hand. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the absolutely best way of meeting people is inviting them. Especially, if, and here's a hot tip for you. Um, find some uh, existing group that does something which is interesting and related. Yeah. Huh? No, no, no. Okay, that's fine. Fine, fine. And still true for you back there or somebody else. Find some group which uh, is close enough into some field that you are interested in. Offer them to do something and then talk about that other community that you're actually interested in. You can like uh, be a little bit sneaky about it, uh, and, but uh, if you start with sharing something, people always, almost always say yes, especially if you uh, are sneaky about it. <laughs> like never mention Pearl. No, okay, I'm kidding. <laughs> but yeah, say, say talk about uh, this is how we do databases in Pearl. This is uh, how we do object orientation. In, uh, uh, this is. Yeah, this is how we write compilers. That's a fantastic what you did at Fostem, and it's a spot on. I wish more people did that. Any comments and ideas and thoughts and co or questions? Daniel, you are uh, in, in the middle of trying out something new in Leipzig. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, but that's uh, uh, but that's partly because of uh, not focusing on it. Uh, uh, like uh, one thing that we did do in the impress part, uh, uh, and that's because I talked with Damien a couple months before and say, and basically made a special request for a talk by him. And what I did was I asked him to give a three-hour technology demo of Perl six. And made sure to that he gave that talk, sort of three-hour talk at the university for students and people at the Department for Informatics that care about languages. So they were specifically inviting people to learn about Per Six, and and uh, Damien showed the cool stuff, uh, and he had full three hours to show all the cool stuff or the most of it at least. And uh, that was brilliant. Uh, and Damien still has that talk and he can give that at any point, uh, I'm sure. And uh, I don't know if you can steal the material, uh, probably not, but it's, uh, you can talk with him about it if you have a, a university or a college nearby that would like to get an, uh, a view about what happens outside their bubble. Hey, show them some Perl six oh, with Damien, and that's like my point. Not here is use Damien. That's not my point. My point is there is cool shit happening in the Perl community, and if you hear something that resonates with you, then it's completely okay to go to some people who are involved in that and say, "Would you like to come to Leipzig and make something out of that?" And of course, uh, uh, we can have trouble around like, oh, well, I don't have money to spend on that. But it's not that, it's not impossible to get some sponsorship money to put somebody on a plane and put them in a hotel or uh, at an Airbnb or even uh, if you have a guest room, it's even cheaper. And most people who uh, care about their project and uh, something cool they want to share with others, they I would say they're happy to get an invitation and a little bit of negotiation of when is a good time. Ta-da, done. So go for it. Awesome. That's a good idea. Any other ideas? In co uh, oh, it backfired. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. It's a do probably solving domain. Uh, it doesn't have to be a specific language, but uh, if you can lean in the direction of one language community, that's okay. Depending on who organizes it, they get to decide a little bit. But the important thing is that there's a bigger picture that people need some help with and solving problems. And maybe the mistake was picking Ruby. If you have picked something like uh, databases or uh, 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 clever object orientation uh, uh, or, or software paradigm uh, 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 meetup where people can try out different paradigms and talk about, no, functional is best. I love Haskell. And you say, uh, and all those people say, no, I, I want it all concurrent. So I only want side effects. Uh, <laughs> And poor people say, I have to know, I want both. <laughs> uh, 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 my, you get my point, yeah. Yeah. Yes. There's several ways of doing that. Uh, the uh, hackerspaces are brilliant because those are very often uh, low effort and they would like to have activities of any kind. Uh, if there's no good options for that, uh, another way is to look at if there are any other meetups, where are they going? Are they going to specific companies or to a co-working facility or at the university or, or equivalent? And uh, talk with the people who are in those uh, meetup groups and say, well, how did they get uh, access to this? And chances are uh, you can go through one or two people and figure out if you can get access to. It's not that hard. And mo quite a lot of companies out there uh, and organ communities, they would like to see activity. And, uh, and if somebody raises their hand and say, hey, I have this interesting topic, they're... If they say no, I'm sorry that they they're stupid or 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 they have the, like the they don't look at the bigger picture, at least. Um, and uh, we can exploit that uh, in many many good and positive ways for for everyone involved. I think we should throw ourselves out now. If there is one final comment, all right, five minutes to the next talk. All right, thank you.